right? I mean, you know, yeah. well, it's already is a, is sort of a, I, I was listening yeah. to a lot of Motown, and I was trying to decipher what magic there was, and you know, how did they get yeah. that unity of sound and still have the the punch of almost live energy on it. Oh, no. And when you any record played in a, in a disco at the, in the sixties, people were just going nuts. You know, dancing in the street, that came on, you're jumping in the air straight away. Yeah. And it was real players. And yeah, now yeah. there's nothing like that. James left, James. You know. So I was determined to at least salute the, the Motown, you know, a couple of those tracks. And uh, yeah. yeah, you uh, also did uh, Armageddon. What's Gay. going on? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Another song that I never <coughs> ever thought my voice would be they, anywhere near. <laughs> <laughs> The talent you're taking. It was a, a very dangerous. Here. You know, Robinson and Marvin Gaye. That was the thinnest you know, piece. You may as well get seriously wet. You know, you and know. John Lennon, by the way. And sink if you have to. I mean, if you're going to sink, just that, sink. Uh, what's so. going on with the thinnest piece of ice I've ever walked on? I think. <laughs> yeah, Marvin, you know, that Rest was his piece, song yeah. forever. And James Jameson's bass oh, line. Man. And, and, and. No, I was not going to let that go. I, I had to have a go at that. But it was we it, made a sort of a composite of different parts of what's going on album so it, the, the track jumps onto another part of the was it and right where he just goes into another mode but it was just much when you got a player like pino paladino was able to do exactly we didn't steal anything off of motown only just jameson's bass line but, but we, we had the original stem, but we didn't use it. It was James, it was uh, Pino Palladino played it. Right. The breadth, of, I mean, it, it feels like almost like a best of uh, album in that sense of, of, you know, something from this album, something from that album, you know. And it shows, it just shows again your breadth as well. I mean, you know, you're going from the most beautiful, uh, the opening track. Uh, and that Walker. You know. Midnight Walker. Just, yeah, you know, which is beautiful. I mean, he beca he he, the guitar becomes the illin pipe, you know. Right. Just this right. The, 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 right. that that sound. I I was um, if I move to the point of you know, gut, then I have to have it. I have to have that. If it's possible to interpret that feeling on the guitar, then I try oh, yeah. to do it. And the illin pipe is because it's single note. It's like a sax, you know. You you know you. You got your jazz players and all that, but this guy, Davis Belan, he's haunted me. And I've covered a couple of his other songs, and he rang me once from a pub in Dublin somewhere. I heard the version you did. Of, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I got my rock and roll songs as well. He said I play rock and roll. I said don't want rock and roll. I want you to, you know, just. He said, all right, I'll write you one that cuts deeper. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he it's did. Lame. So he wrote that for you? No, no, oh. it was just one that he had. And then, and then you go to the, you know, the incredible, heavy <laughs> extreme of, uh, you know, Venus and Furs. Uh, yeah, Venus and Furs. Great. Just been a Lou, Lou Reed fan, obviously. Huh? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. absolutely a, a Velvet Underground yeah. fan, and and just as we started to do these these things, like you know, like. A, a, a Lenin, a Lenin bit, you know, just because, s s simply because it, they're so brilliant, and you, there is a great challenge, you know. So, the challenge, it's the fun bit, that might not end up to be so fun, but I, th I think it worked out. It's, well, I mean, but that was a good, that was a perfect part. example of a, of a, taking a cover and really making it your own, I, I, you know, isolation. Yeah. We're talking isolation, about isolation, yeah, you know. Yeah. Thanks. It's that the back and forth, you know, conversation between you two in the beginning, you know, mm. that really takes it. Now, now you've moved it away from the original, quite considerably, you know. And it's then, just and then it just builds and builds and builds from there. Hard you know? to do. It's yes, yeah, but that is the challenge. It's so ingrained in you, in your mind, you know. Yeah. Lennon. But that's the trick, you know. The, the, the trick with covers is, you know, you got to make it your own somehow. Yeah. And. Uh, so it's, you know, it's either it's either change the gender, you know, change the genre, right. change the tempo, you know, change right. the style, you, you know, something. Yeah. That, that you know just gives sure. you that little bit of, okay, I'm hearing something new now, you know. Yeah. And that's just a great example of it. When I think just yeah, when you find it, and it was it, it was a very laid back process, 
you know, um, that you, when Jeff and I sort of <coughs> were kind of going through what we were going to record and what we wouldn't, because it it would just kind of come like we'd start playing some song just on the guitar. Meanwhile, again, I'm thinking instrumental, and then. You know, then the next day we're going to cut it, and it's it's you know, and then it's done. You know, it, uh, either instrumental or, or or with vocal, we, it was it was a super organic process. You know, sometimes sometimes we'd uh, we'd go in and do a couple of overdubs. You know, Jeff Jeff would or Jeff would go in and do a solo, and then we would stop for a few hours, and then I would do background vocals all night or something. And, Mm. So it was really uh, at our own leisure, really. It, and that was really nice to not have anyone kind of tapping you on the shoulder going, hey, what do you got? Yeah, you know? yeah. So this is all in, in, your, in your studio in, in, in France? It's all over the place, wasn't it? Huh. Yeah, we were. Yeah, Wherever you happen to be. Jeff's. In Los Angeles. And, uh, yeah, Jeff's, LA, and, and my kitchen. France. In your kitchen? You no, it was a sewing room, actually. A kitchen, a sewing room. I had to get all the balls of wool out of there. Recorded <laughs> on an island. This is how organic it was. There, there were times when it was just Jeff and I. And so I don't really know how... I'm not good with computers. I don't know how to run all those things sorry mate jeff is oh, how you doing jeff is he's just like my pipe he might be just a bit better than me with computers no i can't do nothing like no he can't he's as bad as i am so <laughs> so essentially we'd end, up hitting, we'd end up hitting we'd end up hitting just oh that's the red button record <laughs> for each other so i had like hit record and then jeff would play some you know, like some shocking thing that came out of Mozart's head. And I'm recording it going... And then, you know... I, was, I hope this thing's on. I was, I was reduced. It well, I kept watching the, watching the music go across the screen, so I thought, I got it, I got it. But it ended up... The things that he would play, because every, every take of the solo or... A, or whatever was different it was it was a different feel it was a different this it was a different note so he'd really fly around and so essentially by the time i hit stop on record i was cackling like a three-year-old because i'm watching jeff play this stuff going i'll never in my life be able to play that and it made me happy <laughs> What about... It was less responsibility. The, the second solo on the isolation, I'd finished. I'd got to the peak of the thing. And Robert started horse-whipping me to carry on. <laughs> so you could hear the sudden acceleration halfway through this. <laughs> Everybody trying to put us down. Ah. 
People say we got it made Don't they know we're so afraid Ah, ah.